Hey everyone, welcome to Connie Reacts. Er, crap. Hey everyone, Connie Royal here, and today we are reacting to The Devil's a Part Timer episodes 11, 12, and 13, the final three episodes. Um, so I've been putting this off for a while mainly because I just don't want this show to end. It's it's really good. It's really enjoyable, really funny, and I just really like the characters. And it sucks that it only has one season. Like, this show is so worthy of having multiple seasons. Like, seriously, they could make a lot based on this show. They could do so much. Yet they only did one. I, I wonder if that's because maybe it wasn't popular with the Japanese audience. Or maybe the studio just lost interest in continuing to do it. I don't know. But I really, really wish they had continued. I, I, I know there's probably a manga or uh, visual novel or something. Most likely manga. Um, <laughs> but I don't read manga, so I, I'll never see any more. <laughs> Unless they do end up making another season somewhere down the line. Um, but yeah, so right now the big thing we have going for us is the uh, the owner of the Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant across the street from McRonald's. Um, the guy who looks like James. He's apparently, I guess, an, uh, at least that was my theory, that he's an angel. Um... And I think, it was it confirmed last episode when he uh, confronted, uh, oh, what was her name, Susanna or something like that? Um, <laughs> the old-fashioned girl, you know who I'm talking about. Because he confronted her on her when she was on her way home from that entire uh, uh, vacation trip, you could say. <laughs> um, he's definitely the final villain here, though. The final enemy they're going to face. My guess is that he's an angel, and he's going to definitely be the strongest enemy they'll have to take on. Um, the question is, what exactly is that going to encompass? And after they end up defeating him, because we know they will, what's going to happen? Will they go back to Entaila, or will they stay? And I just have no idea where this is going to go, so we're going to find out. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So there we have it. The final three episodes of The Devil's a Part-Time, and I'm really sad, like legit. It's such a good, funny, entertaining show, and it sucks that there's not more. There could be so much more. Like, no joke, there is so much room for more stories with these characters. There's so many options to bring in more enemies for them. Uh, and, and it honestly felt like it almost left off on kind of a incomplete note as well like our our final enemy was an archangel which is big compared to what we've had in the past of course um i mean that's a big deal and he was extremely extremely strong but they they could go so much further than that too they could do so much more have all these more powerful villains I, the church is clearly corrupt and they could bring in more of that. There's so much they could do. And yet they didn't go as far as they could have. And again, the manga probably goes a lot further. The manga probably uh, takes it to a lot more different places with a lot more different characters and just more in general. But this was a 13 episode season. And they haven't continued it since. In, in fact, let me look up real quick. I think this came out in 2013, but I'm not quite sure. It was by Studio White Fox, which is the same studio that brings uh, that's brought us ReZero and Steins Gate, uh, funny enough. Yes, it aired between April and June 2013. 
And it was based off of light novels. Okay. There are currently 18 light novels, the most recent of which came out uh, January of this year. So it's actually still at least mostly ongoing. I mean, not all of them are out in English yet. The most recent that's out in, in English is uh, number 10, which came out April 17th. Or wait, no. April 17th is, t oh, wow, it just came out today. Okay, and the next one comes out on August 21st. So there's still a long way to go uh, for the light novels. There is a manga adaption as well, though. Which apparently currently has 10 uh, volumes out in English, but 12 in, J in Japanese. I'm not seeing anything on any news about like an on plans for another season. At this point, I really doubt it as well. It's been it's been so long. It's not impossible. There have been shows that have had long breaks in between. But I don't know. It's just, it's unlikely. Let me check. Hmm. Oh, hold on. Apparently, uh, there's this Crunchyroll article where the author of Devil's a Part-Timer has commented on a season two regarding it. Let me see what this says. Okay, so there actually is an interest in a second season. People want it. Wagahara, the author, says that he acknowledges the interest. And they made a drama CD because of it. And he's saying there's no way he can promise a second season that is decided in meetings of the higher ups. But he's going to put his efforts into making it work. And this was this apparently came out last year, by the way, in June of last year. So he's saying that he want he, he wants to help make a second season, but there's no guarantees of that happening. There is a drama CD as well that was made with the uh, original cast. So that is a thing as well. But it looks like as of now, there is no second season and there's no word on if there will be in the future or not. Um, at least there have been talks about it, you know, at least something has been discussed and the original light novel author who created the series, at least he's put his sense in. At least he says even he would like to help, the, help work with the fans to get this going, but there's no guarantees of it and he's like saying it's not really his decision in the long run i would love to see that happen at some point even if it's like next year or even 2020 i, I would love to see it happen because it it's it's a good series and it's so worthy of continuing people love it i mean i've heard i've heard that people here in america really do enjoy it it's really popular and now seeing that apparently the Japanese audience loves it too, it's like I'm really surprised they didn't come with the uh, come up with the second season. But here's another thing to note: the original Steinsgate anime came out in 2011. Steinsgate Zero, the sequel anime, just started this month. That is a seven-year difference. It's not impossible. And it was also Studio White Fox. So they came out with a sequel season to Steins Gate, seven years after the first. And yes, there was a movie in between. But still, Steins Gate was also really popular, so it makes sense. It has been 
five years since Devil's a Part-Timer came out. It is still very possible to get a sequel season. It could come... It's not coming this year. At this point, there's been nothing announced. So it's not going to come this year. It might come next year. It might come in 2020. Maybe even 2021. But it's very possible it's going to come. With as much fan response as there's been, apparently, it's possible. But let's actually talk about this episode, or these episodes. So these final three episodes basically form an arc of sorts. So we have our main villain, our, our final villain of the series, who is this archangel. Uh, I've already forgotten his name. I, I apologize for that. Um, he's this archangel. It was like, it was Saliel or something like that. I'm going to say Saliel for now. Or Sariel. Sariel, I think it was. I'm, I'm going to say Sariel. <laughs> so Archangel Sariel, and he was the guy at, Mc, at, at Kentucky Fried Chicken, just like I, I knew he was. Obviously, it was going to be the guy in the ski mask. Uh, it was just too obvious, but it wasn't supposed to be super uh, hard to guess, let's be honest. Um, so he's there to try and convince Suzu Suzuno. Suzuno or Suzuno? I think it's Suzuno. He's there to try and convince Suzuno uh, to, to do her job, basically, and kill the devil. Um, she's been avoiding it because she's actually found a cam camaraderie with him and the others and she's become friends but his words kind of spur on and she takes action but then amelia and mao himself kind of get through to her a bit they kind of get through to her and make her realize that she just doesn't want to see these sacrifices anymore she doesn't want to see people dying for stupid reasons so she turns on them. Um, she turns on uh, Sariel and joins their side. And we see Arushihara uh, help out as well when he tricks Olba, which is fantastic. <laughs> and they end up working together in order to minimize Sariel's power enough to be able to defeat him. And they do. And they, they send him back, but apparently he comes through to the freezer again and yeah whatever that was never really uh concluded either too because he was kind of like being a let a leech after uh chiho and mao's uh, in, uh manager and nothing really ever came of it <laughs> they never really went anywhere with that um so there was a lot of great action, a lot of great moments, uh, even some really good uh, moments of moral ambiguity. Like this series has covered that very well in general, with Amelia questioning just everything regarding Mao and, and Ashia. It's like, how can the devil and one of his generals be living normal lives in Japan? How can they be doing these good things and it's like we've seen others question we've saw uh susano question that as well and it really goes into this idea of like everything we've been told everything we've known of these of, of these people of these demons have been that they are these evil monstrous beings that have caused all this death and destruction and from what we've seen this is not wrong they have I mean, to the best of our knowledge, to the best of our knowledge, Amelia's father was killed by, I believe it was Lucifer's army. And all of these different villages and towns and whatnot and people have been murdered by Satan's armies. So it's not an unfounded belief, but her... Her, those beliefs also affected how she viewed him now. She refused to believe that he could change because of all these evil actions he had committed. She refused to believe that 
someone as evil and terrible as him could actually learn to care for people. And sure, it was kind of done in a roundabout way to where he kind of felt this obligation because he was trying to... Initially, his goal for living there and getting this job and everything was to return to Enta Ela. But then he ended up eventually starting to care for these people to such a degree that he he used his magic to fix the world and to help others instead of going back to Enta Ela. He could have gone back at multiple times during this series. There are multiple episodes where he had the magical ability to be able to go back. I, and I fully believe that he chose to keep himself there in order to help others. And I love that because it shows character growth and, and development. And here's the thing. I know there's a lot of Christians out there who will try to like put down this this show because, oh, it, it, it's trying to make you feel sympathetic for the devil and stuff. And it's like, it's going to turn you away from Christianity. And it's like, I'm saying this because obviously these kind of beliefs are a factor with this series. I am a Christian. I've talked about this before and I'll probably mention it again. I am Christian. Uh, when I view a series like this, though, none of those kind of thoughts go through my head. At my belief in the devil, like the real devil, is that he's evil and that I'm never going to trust his words, his temptations, or anything regarding him. But this is a show. And a lot of people don't make that distinction. A lot of people think that fictional content, whether it be TV shows, movies, video games, or whatnot, can affect people in all these horrible ways. They think that a show that, that has a fictionalized version of the devil is going to make Christians turn away from Christianity and sympathize with the devil, the real devil, in real life. That's not how it works. You have to know how to separate fantasy from reality, fiction from nonfiction. The Devil's a Part-Timer, is it's a, it's a fictional show. It's a fun anime or light novel or manga or whatever else. It's completely fictional and it doesn't affect my feelings on anything at all in real life. I enjoy it, yes. And so, sure, some of the messages in it I can learn from about how to treat others and just things like that. But it's not going to make me sympathize for the devil. It's not going to make me think that all bad people deserve to be given the chance to redeem themselves because there are a lot of people who need to be uh, subjected to justice for their actions. That is that is truth. It's not going to make me think that kind of stuff. It's, it's the same thing as with violent video games. Violent video games don't cause violence. People who go out and, ca and cause violence and who just happen to play violent video games, that's more of a, that's a problem with them not the games. They're not learning this from the games. This is already in them. Whether it's ingrained to them through uh, through people like telling them this kind of stuff is okay or not teaching them the opposite or just whatever else. This is not the game's fault. I've played so many violent video games, you have no idea. Uh, I grew up as a kid playing Mortal Kombat. I, I grew up playing Mortal Kombat. I grew up watching violent movies. I, I'm not violent. I mean, yes, I have had moments of violence in my life, but in general, and for the most part, I'm not. I think the most violent thing I did was I got into a fight in middle school once. That's it. And it was once. <laughs> uh, the only other violent stuff I've done is probably fights with my brother, but we don't even do that anymore, especially not to the level we ever did before. <laughs> um, but yeah, the point is, the most violent thing I've ever done is I kicked someone. And the reason I was doing it was to defend someone else, a friend of mine, but still. The point is, violent, it wasn't because of violent video games that I did that. It was because of an anger towards a person's actions, which was towards a friend of mine. 
it had nothing to do with violent video games. It had nothing to do with the fact that I've played Mortal Kombat or other fighting games. It was because I really didn't like, I don't like people picking on and hurting others. And so I acted against it. And nowadays I would never do that, mind you. But still. <laughs> uh, video games, anime, uh, live action shows, movies, whatever else, comic books, they don't incite violence. They, they're not going to teach someone to do these bad things. That's a problem in other, for other reasons. If a person is doing these bad things, it's not because of the games. It's because they're not being raised properly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to say, someone watching Devils of Part Timer is not going to necessarily sympathize with the devil in real life. Someone watching Devils of Part Timer is not going to turn away from Christianity. If someone who happens to have watched Devils of Part Timer or read the light novels or manga, and if they do do either of those things, it's not because of Devils of Part Timer. It's because of other reasons. People have left Christianity for a lot of reasons, and none, and almost no examples have been for that. Most of the time, it's because they just don't believe anymore, and different factors in their life have led them to that. And it's not because of shows or movies or whatnot. It's mostly because of the way uh, a lot of fake Christians out there uh, who call themselves Christians and who the world mostly sees as an example of Christianity. It's how they treat others and all of that. Yeah, let's just say this. When the Christian right will uh, celebrate someone like Donald Trump, that's why people have a negative view on Christianity. Let's leave it at that. Um, either way... Either way, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to start a political debate, but I have my opinions, and I'm willing to share them. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this series ended off then with a final episode that was very simple. No big events happening. There were a couple of dreams in it that almost felt like big events, but they were more just internal worries. Nothing really big happened. Nothing really exciting it kind of left off on a simple note and i think that's the best way to do it because after all of that big heavy stuff with uh sariel you need to just kind of come back from that and, and really connect with these characters one more time and i think it did that perfectly and the final scene it ended off with after the credits with the with uh amelia giving mao the umbrella was perfect because that was it from episode one when he gave her her the umbrella it's a great parallel to show how far they've come and then when he thanks her and you could see her blush a little and smile as she uh says you're welcome she meant it you could tell she meant that because they had become friends and even though she clearly in this up in, in the final episodes here was uh she she wouldn't believe it like she was saying like uh it she almost said maybe i could forgive him that's almost what she was saying there but it's like no no i couldn't and it's like because after all he had done and her father's death and everything and i i understand i get where she's coming from and she has a right to be upset about that still she has a right to not forgive him but she wants to and you can tell because she has come to respect him to be honest and I love that. Again, character growth and development. So yeah, this series definitely could have another season. And I th honestly think it should. And I hope it does. Whether it comes uh, sooner or later, I do not know. But it is possible, once again, because White Fox brought Steins Gate back this year. Again, seven years after the end of the first season. It's possible. That's all I'm saying. Um, in the meantime, tell me your thoughts down below on the final three episodes of The Devil's a Part-Timer. What did you think of the final fight with Sariel? What did you think of the final episode kind of being just a calm down and bring things back kind of episode? And what did you think of the final scene with the umbrellas? Tell me your thoughts on all that and more in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. This was the final reaction 
for the Devils a part-timer. And next up, we get to start Dofus. So for now, I'm Connie Royal, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. And don't just live for tomorrow. Or just live for yesterday. Just be glad for all you have that's in today. And though you've come through many obstacles, shed tears along the way.